ask you, what's a quant? A quant can be defined as um, similar to a mushroom. You keep them in the dark and you feed them shit. So, <laughs> which is more or less what a lot of people in the industry would say. So quant is a short form of quantitative or quantitative analyst. So we understand what an analyst is, he analyzes something, and quantitative, it's very numerical. So in the investment banking industry, at least on the equity side, you've got something called a research analyst. So what he does is he gets all the annual reports from companies and researches them as an analyst in his capacity as an analyst and then produces a report for clients that indicates the company good or bad. So a quantitative analyst will look just at the market numbers. He won't look at annual reports. He'll look at particular things in the market, market variables, and he'll try to come up with a decision of should you buy or should you sell. So it's very mathematical, very rule-based. Now there are two kinds of quants in the industry, in the financial industry. One quant will focus primarily on pricing things. And so that's an interesting concept because when people say, well, well why do I have to price a stock? I look at the market and you know, IBM trades at 99, it's 99. And that's true because a share is a very simple product. But I think if you, if you look at sort of advertisements for financial services products that your bank might offer, you'd find in the post office where they say, buy this um, bond or notes and we'll guarantee you 5% for the first three years and then it'll go to 2% and then this will happen and then if the equity market go goes to that place, well, that's a, a structured product. And that structured product, because it offers you certain benefits like paying you out so many percentage points a year guaranteed, well, that guarantee doesn't just come out of thin air. Somebody's got to take a risk on that. So what will happen is you'll have a service provider selling you this note and then the service provider will hedge out the risks with a bank and the bank will have to take on these particular risks. And taking on these risks means actively trading to hedge what you've sold to the client. And how you hedge, the quantity of the amount you have to hedge, well, that's determined by these pricing models that a quant develops. That's completely different than having a quant who's asked, you have the S&P and you've got crude oil and you've got uh, euro dollar. Can you come up with a model that predicts where the Nikkei will go? So, that's a comp so these are the two kind of groups of quants. So the first, the pricing quant, it gets well paid still. A lot of, of these guys are employed on the street because these kinds of products are constantly being sold to people, especially in an environment where interest rates are at zero percent. How do you squeeze value out of the market to guarantee a higher rate of return for investors, for clients? And on the other hand, the quant that has to predict stuff, well, he has a much more difficult job because coming back to what we said, living in a constant state of regret also comes from the fact that markets are incredibly difficult to predict. So these quants do look for models, but most of the models have only a very tiny edge. And a lot of the guys who go into this kind of predictive quantitative analysis, it's the intellectual stimulus. I mean, there's nothing more fascinating than knowing that you're faced with a pile of spaghetti but somehow you manage to disentangle it and it comes out clean. And, and that's what these guys engage in. I mean, both of them are intellectually stimulating, but it's the kind of personality you have that attracts you to one or the other. And I certainly was attracted to the one that predicts the future, crystal ball tarot cards. What are some of the best quant hedge funds out there? Again, Medallion, certainly close to outside investors, run by Renaissance Technologies. Uh, Renaissance also offered bigger institutional funds called the RIF and the REIF fund. There are um, equity and futures funds, very interesting. Then there is uh, Winton Capital. Uh, Winton uh, was effectively set up by David Harding. His middle name is Winton. He is the H in AHL. Maybe some people are familiar with that. AHL was set up by three guys from Oxford who actually had a trend following system back in the 80s that got bought up by one of the biggest listed hedge funds on the London Stock Exchange, and then they went up. Harding set up uh, Winton Capital, and then the other two set up Aspect. And so they have a phenomenally good track record. Then I said Tewksbury, Mono Trout, or Stevens Capital. Now they're very, very good at what they do. Um, Crable Capital Management, he wrote a fantastic book, Toby Crable, in the 90s on patterns in the market. People should definitely read that. Um, Victor Niederhofer, 
who definitely is, I think, one of the very first people to really use statistics in the markets. I mean, he was voted until 1997, probably one of the best fund managers in the United States. Unfortunately, he did blow up in 97 and again in 2008. But regardless of that, I think he's still a phenomenal guy with incredible insights into the markets and people should definitely read his books. Um, so yes, you do have some tremendously good quantitative funds and the ones I, I listed just now.